Welcome back. This is the fourth of seven videos looking at risk decisions and chapter eight of Wheeler's most excellent book, Security Risk Management. What we're going to be doing during this uh, particular video is looking at policy exceptions. And so as you can see, policy exceptions or these risk exceptions have many different purposes. It may be uh, the, the exposure can't be remediated or mitigated. It may be that we've decided to accept the risk or that the cost of mitigating that risk is too expensive. Um, it, you know, so it may be, for example, uh, we want to uh, mitigate the risk of phishing, so we're not going to have email. Um, that, that, that mitigation, uh, and that's an avoidance approach, not a mitigation approach, um, but that avoidance approach may not be acceptable. It may be that we just can't mitigate it. It's going to bypass our technical and policy controls, and we've got to have an education, training, and awareness uh, campaign to bring people on board. It may be that there are compensating controls that lower the residual risk uh, to an acceptable level, and so there's a policy exception. Or it may be that you're going to accept it temporarily while uh, it's being addressed. So, for example, at uh, our institution, uh, we've got a cloud for a strategy. Uh, as we're moving everything to the cloud, we are holding off on uh, additional uh, disaster recovery investments uh, because the, the cloud strategy will actually address that. So we've got a window of vulnerability uh, for a couple of years, but we're willing to accept that window of vulnerability um, because the, the cost outweighs uh, any reduction in risk that we might uh, realize. All right, so here's a possible workflow. Uh, I'm going to do this two different ways. This is the textual version for those of you who learn by reading text. And then the next slide is going to have a graphical version. So you can start off with anyone being able to uh, submit an exception to a policy based on risk. That's going to be reviewed at a functional uh, unit. They're going to uh, approve it and then forward it to the security team. The security team will then review it, do a risk uh, rating. Uh, associated with it and a possible exception date for that to management uh, for approval. Uh, depending on that, uh, the level of risk, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, um, uh, someone at a senior level reviews it and approves it. Once it's approved, uh, then it's uh, finalized, and then there's an expiration date associated with it, and then you're going to update everybody, and then uh, that it's either been approved, disapproved, or extended. Here's that graphical representation. You're starting up in the left. Again, anybody can uh, submit it. Goes into that functional review uh, where the accuracy and it's validated, recommended. Goes into security. They do the same thing. Uh, from there, it's uh, some senior functional manager is going to approve the plan, send it forward for exception approval. It's typically a member of the C staff, and that's going to be uh, approved or disapproved. Uh, it then goes into tracking, and then periodically you've got to go back in and either extend it or ex expire uh, that particular exception. Exceptions are not forever. Lots of different information has to go into making these particular decisions. So, of course, it's not a surprise that you've got to uh, collect a good bit of information to consider an exception to policy, and you want to document all of this. And then finally, here's where, as you're looking at the likelihood and impact or likelihood and severity of a uh, particular attack, and you're looking at a possible uh, exception, it may be uh, that uh, for those low-level risks, you're just going to have the chief information security officer or a senior manager from the information security team uh, do that approval. For the moderate level, uh, you've got two of the uh, senior levels uh, involved. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, the uh, high-level risk, you've got a C-level executive uh, involved or two of the kind of operating officers uh, being involved in those types of decisions. All right, and then the book suggests one year from the approval date. I would argue you probably want to do this based on risk so that, again, you have different periods associated with low, moderate, and high. But it's the idea that you do, again, these exceptions don't last forever. They have an expiration date, and you revisit that risk uh, based on that expiration date. Well, how about that? We're at the end of the uh, fourth of seven videos uh, looking at risk decisions. What we're going to do 
And the uh, next lesson is move off into one of our supplemental readings, and we're going to look at the CIS Top 20 Controls, because we've spent a bit of time talking about controls. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. So keep on learning, keep on studying, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.